Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon and welcome again with our interview in the frame of the Excel Joint Undertaking Symposium 2021. Today we have the pleasure to have with us uh, James uh, Robson, who is Corporate Vice President of Applied Materials uh, Europe. James, very warm welcome. Thank you. Good morning. In the current um, time frame, uh, it may be very, very general on, on, on how hard, how far has your sector, yeah, the ECS sector, your sector, your, your, your business, been affected by the COVID? Thank you for the question. And uh, again, uh, really appreciate uh, having time with, uh, with you guys to, to talk about some, some factors that are really affecting our business. So COVID has uh, been with us now for uh, over 18 months. Um, um, so ironically, out of a terrible, difficult situation for many, many people, for us in the semiconductor industry, uh, we have seen a massive acceleration of trends that we had been seeing, um, but these have been put on a completely different path now um, because of what the pandemic has done. Indeed, the, uh, the, the pandemic, the COVID has, uh, has been a stress test for many, many uh, sectors, for many uh, industries, for, for I think the whole uh, uh, society. Um, um, and, and we also have seen this in the, um, in the, in the, in the supply, the supply of uh, chips, there was, a, there was a shortage. Yeah? So how do you analyze this, uh, this uh, shortage uh, of, uh, of, of supply? Is this temporary? Is this permanent? Well, I think, um, you know, the biggest impact that we've seen in Europe that we've read in the newspapers every single day is the impact that it's had on the automotive industry and the fact that sure. we have uh, car companies actually slowing down production, ironically, because they're unable to manufacture cars because of chips. And I think this has been a real wake-up call for the European Union that they cannot rely 100% on chips from other regions of the world um, for their manufacturing capacity. The automotive industry is the crown jewels of Europe, incredibly important, and it's going through a massive inflection through electric petrification, and also autonomous vehicles. And in order to support all that massive increase in electronics in the car, we need to build our own supply chain uh, in Europe. Indeed, and I, I come back to the same point I made before. The, uh, the whole pandemic has been a stress test and I, I sincerely hope that uh, when we are going back to kind of a normal situation again, that we still uh, keep, keep the learnings from this pandemic situation, lockdown situation, because I feel it, so convenient and so environmental friendly to have a little more of these virtual uh, discussions and meetings rather than jumping again in a plane and flying all around the world and uh, meeting like that. But I think, and you may well agree with this, that the personal contact is something we sincerely and deeply miss at this moment in time. Yeah, I think um, two things. So, so number one, applied materials is definitely not intending to go back to where we came from. This will not keep us in the position where we have been for the past 20 years, which is the leading company in semiconductor equipment manufacturing. Um, we have to move to a new norm um, and we have to learn out of uh, the past and of what we've gone through in the last 18 months, incorporate this together, um, obviously, with the things that we've been missing, which is the personal contact. And I think, you know, our CEO says that he's never been able to meet with so many CEOs in such a short period of time um, than in the last 18 months without having any jet lag um, and, uh, and losing so much time. On the other time, the personal contact is very important. And the effects of not having that personal contact, I think we won't see today, next month, or maybe this year, this will take a few years maybe to, to establish itself. And we, we have to make certain that that is addressed um, in, our, in our new norms that every company is putting together. They're all going towards one direction, which is a hybrid model. Some working from home, some working in the office, trying to find the balance between the human nature and the human needs, um, as well as also the business needs. True, and this uh, largely due to the fact that the electronic components and systems, the whole digital environment has allowed this uh, to happen because if this pandemic would have happened 10 years ago, we wouldn't be in the same, how to say, comfortable situation as we are at this moment in time. Yeah, I mean, that's the ironic thing is that everything that applied materials makes possible, and that's part of our, our, our company statement, um, is being used for this conversation today 
uh, and enabling all of the e-commerce that's going on around the world and enabling all of these trends to go onto a much, much faster path. So we've enabled a lot of this, sure. but we just have to be careful in making certain that we don't um, miss the human aspect of things uh, when all of this sure. comes back to, uh, to normal. No, fully, fully agree with that. Um, maybe um, a little other uh, direction of questions. Um, uh, Applied Materials has been uh, participating in the Excel program quite, um, quite frequently, yeah, every, every year almost. Um, and, uh, why does a company like uh, Applied Materials uh, joins our program? What's in for you, a bigger, bigger worldwide player, comes and, and, and works together in the Excel uh, community? What's in for, for you joining us? Well, uh, we've been a long-standing partner, as you said, of Excel. We have actually um, been participating in more than 15 projects, Excel projects, in the last 10 years. Um, all of this is around collaboration with other companies or other institutes who together, the result can provide a much faster um, a more efficient way of producing new ideas than if we do this apart. Um, our focus at Applied Materials really is on time to market. Um, if you are able to bring out a new device um, or a new technology six months earlier, the value that that provides to our competitors, sorry, our companies, uh, our, our customers, um, as well as also the, the overall community is enormous. Um, accelerating the time frame only comes when you bring like-minded people together and when you bring institutes together that augment each other. So when we work with organizations like Letty, like IMEC, like CEA, like TEA, Delft, uh, we're bringing together incredible uh, um, uh, organizations um, that can bring us much faster to a result than if we did all of this uh, on our own. And obviously we need to find a balance there, um, but one of the, again, I talk about crown jewels, the, some of the crown jewels of Europe are the RTO organizations that we have. These are unique, they are world-class organizations, um, the likes of which are we don't have anywhere else in the world, I believe. Um, and we need to take advantage of working together with them uh, in these uh, Excel agreements. So we're a, we're a big supporter. Um, applied Materials spends uh, way over 10, more 12% of its overall revenue on uh, research and development. This is something that we've done uh, historically over many, many years. Um, so this is a very, very important part of our business and particularly for Europe, um, very important part of our R&D strategy. Uh, thank you, and true. I'm, um, I'm, 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 I'm very uh, fond of the model of uh, this uh, joint undertaking because it really brings uh, all the uh, partners uh, together, smaller companies, bigger companies, uh, uh, RTOs, universities, and of course also the public authorities who give, uh, how to say, policy directions uh, uh, well needed in our specific fields on electronic uh, components and systems. But if we are looking future now, so the new program, Key Digital Technologies, is upcoming, um, what do you see from your perspective as technical priorities in the, um, for the future, for the future program? So, so first of all, I would say from, from, from our perspective, the, the, the KDT, so the key digital technologies, we see it as one of the most advanced and the, one of the most transparent tools that we see to foster a sophisticated research in, in Europe. Um, and we really recognize what's been put together here. The focus we think, um, you know, we have an organization that applied materials called ICAPS. And ICAPS means Internet of Things, Communication, Automotive, power and sensors. These are all what you call specialty semiconductor markets. And this is the fastest, one of the fastest growing uh, areas uh, in our business. And it's an area where Europe has some companies who are absolutely leading. I think of companies like Infineon and Bosch and ST Microelectronics, just to name three, who are all leading in their fields. So what I would like to see um, from my perspective is those areas need to be become and, and stay our strengths rather than, rather than in Europe, let's say, focusing on areas where maybe there are other companies or other regions um, who have better capabilities. I think in the area of microcontrollers, for example, we know for a fact that microcontrollers are definitely one of the key parts for the automotive industry. And this is a part that's been missing. This is the reason why some of the biggest companies, car companies, in Europe have not been able to manufacture their cars. We need to think about how do we take care of, uh, of that area? 
So those are the areas where I would like to see the focus. Focus on our strengths rather than starting in an area where there are already very good capabilities in, let's say, other regions. Yeah, very, very clear. Yeah? Um, focusing on our strength rather than trying to, uh, have to say, develop positions we are not necessarily very strong on and which uh, sufficient, um, how to say, uh, capabilities and capacities are available in the other sides of, uh, of the world. Maybe some uh, wrapping up questions, some final question, um, easy for me. Um, um, so I pass the ball back to you. Is there anything you would have on your wish list to ask uh, me as the director of Excel or a little wider to the governing board of Excel KDT? What would be uh, number one or two on your, on your, on your wish list? Um, I think I think my number one item on the wish list is to have early involvement in the decision making, um, so that we can feel that we are in the in an area where we can um, uh, provide direction uh, and, and provide influence. Um, so anything that we can do to get earlier involved in the decisions of which technologies are going to be focused, which areas, um, how of and the other you know, and also how do we generate sufficient talent pipeline in Europe in order to serve our industry. Those are the areas where I would like to see, um, you know, things, uh, I wouldn't say change, but just uh, our influence to be increased. That would be uh, something that I would have on my wish list. I, um, again, hear very clear from, from your side on your expectations. The, uh, the, the skills, pact for skills, is mm -hmm. indeed something we were working on to get the more more talent involved, uh, resources are limited, and we need the, the, best, uh, the best people uh, involved in our sector uh, to help us moving forward, especially in the, in the uh, international um, play field. Then the, 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 the first point on your, your request is uh, getting early involvement in the decision-making process in the, um, how to say, probably accelerating um, decision-making process is also very clear because uh, decision-making at European level is not always, um, how to say, the, uh, the quickest process. Good. Um, thank you very much, James, for being with us. Uh, very much appreciated. I think this uh, is a very, uh, was a very interesting discussion. So again, thank you very much for your availability and your time. And uh, hopefully we one day will meet uh, in person uh, to have this uh, chat, similar chat over. I hope so. Thank you. I want to thank everybody involved in the interview and yourself uh, for the time that you spent. And again, I'm, uh, I could not believe um, where we are now versus where we are 18 months ago. I'm super, super excited to see the European Union put a focus on semiconductor industry with their uh, Digital Compass uh, 2030 Pact. Um, so I don't think there's a better place to be at this point in time than in Europe uh, and this industry. And uh, very happy to have been able to talk to you today. Thank you very much. Thank you, James. Thank you for being with us.